Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash and if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. And if you're new here, this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week and I also post regular tutorials on things that I've learnt along the way. So I'm going to start with finished objects. This week I have two finished objects. Um, the first one um, almost wasn't a finished object because I couldn't find the ball of yarn. I had one extra little ball of yarn and I couldn't figure out where I'd put it. But anyway, I located it this morning and I just finished it this morning and it's the Muscle Bra Hat. So um, this is the Muscle Bra Hat by Isolde Teague. I'll just try it on. And I've knit this out of, it kind of goes with my, with my top actually. Um, it's knit out of hedgehog fibers, skinny singles in a colorway that was ex exclusive to my um, yarn store Skein Sisters here in Sydney and it um, it weighs 106 grams. This is my 16th muscle bra. So um, I knit it to, I knit, so it's fingering weight yarn. I knit it on a 3.25 millimeter needle. I got up to 136 stitches and then I knit, um, mm, the, from tip to tip it's 21 inches. So I knit to about 18 inches and then did the decreases. Actually, interestingly, because I guess this must have been where I changed um, it's all the one skein, but you can see there, like maybe I used sort of one end of the ball and then this is the yarn that was re-knit, um, that was previously knit in my sorrel. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. Actually, it almost seems like the middle bit's a little bit different. Anyway, that one side's going to be completely inside the other and then you fold up the brim. So um, I've got a pretty standard size head, about 22 inches. It measures about nine and a quarter inches across. So I guess that's 18 and a half inches in circumference. So I guess, what's that about? Three inches of negative ease. Four, almost four inches of negative ease. Anyway, um, that's it. It's nice and warm. Um, I really don't like cold ears in the winter, so it will give a nice, um, oh, I just couldn't hear myself then, um, a nice uh, warm layer. Um, there in winter, obviously we're coming into um, we're coming into summer here. We're in spring now, but we're coming into summer, so this won't get worn for a while. But it was nice to get it um, to get it finished. So yep, so that's um, Muscle Bra by Solar Teague, and it used almost the whole skein. I think I've only got maybe three or four grams um, left. Although I could possibly have a little bit more, like somewhere lying around from um, because I you know reused the yarn so that's um, finished object number one and finished object number two is the skimmer socks which I'm pretty sure is out of knit picks for Leachy. I almost had it finished last week and yeah these fit really well I've already um, worn them for a walk with the dog um, with my son um, Zach while I was knitting and they stayed up the whole time they're completely comfortable and and a really good fit so in the pattern I just follow exactly the pattern with the same needle sizes. So it's Skimmer Socks Revisited. Um, I used a 2.25 millimeter needle for the body and then a two millimeter needle for the ribbing, which is what's recommended. Um, the heel flap is still done on a 2.25. It's just the ribbing and the bind off on a two mil needle because you want that to keep it sort of pretty snug. And yeah, really like, I just think these are so cute and they make me really happy. And they're very, there's very little yarn. So I think I only used 16 grams of yarn for each one. So um, really good for leftovers. And I think um, even if I don't have quite enough, um, somebody suggested, and I think it's a really good idea, either to do the heel in a different color or the heel and toe, or I could do um, the, um, just the, you know, the ribbing in a different color. And in fact, on a previous one, I'll just grab it. Uh, where did I put it? Mm. I thought I had everything ready. Um, I always think I do. Um, sorry, this is my, this is a previous one that I knit where I, um, I actually ran out, I ran out of yarn and so I used um, a, like a contrasting color for one row and the bind off. And I thought that actually looks really nice. So obviously that looks nice on a solid and with a stripey yarn, it changes color anyway. So I would just try to pick a color that kind of coordinated with the with the rest of the rest of the yarn. All right, so they're my two finished objects. Um, because I finished two objects, I kind of went a bit crazy with um, casting on and I cast on three new whips and I still have four whips on the needle. So I'm up to seven total, um, but that's all right. That's, that's fine. Um, it's school holidays. And even though I've got a bit of work to do, I've got, 
you know, I don't mind moving, you know, around a few different things. Um, but before I get into my works in progress, I might mention my um, faux from the vault. So this is the Love Note sweater by Tin Can Knits. And I used Madeleine Tosh Tosh Merino Light in the colorway Rose. And for the silk mohair, um, I actually just got it on D-Stash and it was a yarn that I couldn't really identify. Or it had a label, but it was something that wasn't on Ravelry. I can't even remember what it was called. So this is, um, it's kind of, people have compared it to the Ranunculus. Um, and I guess it's kind of similar in some ways in that it's oversized with a you know lace on the yoke and whatever, but there's definite differences. So um, this was knit on a 5.5 millimeter needle, whereas the ranunculus I knit on six millimeter needles. Um, what else is different? This is probably the heaviest out of the ranunculus. I've made three ranunculus sweaters and I've got another one on the needles. Um, it's one of my new works in progress, but um, I guess I used quite different yarn with the two. So with this one, I used a fingering weight and a silk mohair lace weight. Um, so that's sort of a bit more substantial and on a slightly smaller needle. The, the, um, and you can probably see as well, like I knit the smaller size in both the ranunculus and the love note, but I guess here um, the, there's less positive ease built into the love note. The ranunculus has a lot of po positive ease built into it. Um, I might actually just take a look. I haven't, I forgot to check, but um, I'll put down below what the gauge is for um, Love Note and what my gauge was. And um, then sort of like if, you know, mine's smaller because my gauge was tighter, which is definitely the case for the ranunculus. But um, yeah, I, I don't actually wear it that much, probably because, I mean, I'm wearing it over a, um, I'll just stand back so you can see it. I used all the yarn that I had because um, the Madeleine Tosh was leftovers anyway from a top that I'd made. So um, I knit, I think I knit the, I can't even remember the order that I knitted in, but I, I was really playing yarn chicken. So I think I just knit the body to sort of around um, my natural waist to wear over um, one of these not perfect linen dresses. And then I just knit the sleeves as far as I could go. My bind off's just a little bit tight. So, but I don't even know like that I have any yarn. Oh, I couldn't lay my hands on any leftover yarn. So the only thing I could do there would be to undo the bind off, undo a row and then bind off um, more loosely, but I don't even have that many rows to play with. And I also don't like my chances at undoing that bind off successfully. Anyway, it's not horrible. But it's not like what I like to do is to be able to push my sleeves up and it's tight enough that it, that's that's actually really uncomfortable. So as a result, the only way I can wear it is to have it fully down and then it's kind of in no man's land with sleeves. So if I'm cold, I'd want sleeves covering here. If I'm hot, I want to push them up here. So and I'm hot right now, so I want to get it off. So but I'll show you sort of how it, it does have like a nice decorative um, decorative sort of lace yoke. And it is pretty, but I reckon that's that might be one of the reasons that I don't go to it that often. Um, yeah, but I don't know why not actually, because I wear this dress to work, so I think that would be that would probably be fine to wear um, over a dress. But it, oh, I, that's probably what it is actually, because when I go into the classroom, if it's heated, I want to be able to push my sleeves up, and that's not um, so. It might be too too cold to take it off, but too hot to not be able to push it up. Anyway, that's a really long-winded way of saying that I, I think the bind off actually is a problem. So maybe I will give it a go and see if I can locate some of the leftover, leftover um, yarn, because that might be, um, might be worth, worth doing. Anyway, so it's a love note by Tin Can Knits. And I thought that would actually be a good segue into um, one of my new works in progress because you can actually see the difference between these two if I take this one off and I try and um, this is my ranunculus by um, uh, Midori Hiroshi. This is my first fourth version of the ranunculus and um, I'm knitting that out of um, Sanders Garn Tin Lina and um, That's all I've got left of the first ball. I've got two balls and this is La Bienname Silk Mohair. I've only got the one ball of that. Now, I did a bit of miscalculation last week. That's 500 meters. And I thought 
the tin leaner had 250 meters in each ball, so I thought, oh, 500, but actually it's only 220, so that's only 440 meters. However, um, I'll take this off and I can try this on, because this is quite warm. All right, so getting that off. Um, but you can see they're both pink, but there's sort of different shades of pink. This this one is coming out more apricot-y, like the ranunculus is. So this is the love note, and this is the ranunculus. I probably don't look that different, but this is definitely lighter in color and more apricot-y than this one, which is much more of a, a pink. Um, so I will, where am I up to? So I only um, cast this on uh, on Saturday because the um, Fruitful Hands are doing a um, knit along and I've really been enjoying watching them. They're a mother-daughter podcast and I'd love it if one of my daughters would podcast with me, but um, yes, maybe one day, you never know. Um, so, cause they, they both know how to knit and me and it's occasionally and Alex certainly can. She's even done furlough and everything. She just hasn't for a while. Um, okay, so this is how it's coming along so far. I just knit it off onto a large needle so I could I, um, block it. And this one actually, it seems more oversized than my other ones, but it's actually the gauge is the same. I'm getting for this one, 16 stitches over four inches, which is exactly what I got on all my others. So it actually is, the gauge is the same. Just seems, maybe it just seems bigger because maybe my row gauge is different. I haven't checked my row gauge because I'll try it on. It does seem longer in the arm side, but maybe that's just because I'm not finished. I haven't finished it and I haven't picked up the stitches under the arm. So that might just be a perception thing because when you pick up the stitches under the arms, it does sort of cinch it in a little bit. Anyway, so, this is, so you can see how it sort of seems quite big, but yeah, maybe my others were the same. Anyway, so um, <clears throat> just interesting for comparison between this and the love note. I'll put a picture of me in the love note up here so you can sort of have the two side by side. This is definitely, so this is the tin leaner, which is, you know, the, that's interesting actually, because 100 grams of this is 440 meters. 100 grams of the Tosh Merino Light is about 380 meters. So it's not a massive difference, but a needle size, like one needle size up. So this is on a six mil, and maybe just the linen as opposed to the wool. Um, I think the, the mohairs are pretty similar. Anyway, in interesting. This is definitely much lighter and sort of um, less dense. Um, yeah, you can see how open that is, whereas that's not nearly as open. Uh, yeah, so I think that's with the um, linen blend, you're gonna get that kind of effect. And I really like it. I think it's really lovely. I'm debating about making I think I might make this a short sleeve top. Um, all my other, oh, so I've done two ranunculuses with long sleeves. I've done one with um, silk mohair held double. That's my Clementine one, I'll put a picture up there. And I've done one in a lace weight, alpaca silk lace weight held with a silk mohair. And that was also, they, those two were pretty similar in sort of weight and um, fabric and I made them both with long sleeves. The My third one I made out of worsted weight yarn, so a completely different yarn, a cotton blend yarn, um, Barocco Remix, I'll put a picture of that. So they're the three ones that I've made up to now. This one is closer to my first two, because it's, you know, the third purple one was like a worsted weight, but it definitely feels sort of lighter and, I don't know, it just feels lighter. Maybe it's not, maybe it's just my perception, but I think, I'm debating whether to make it just a, like a cropped top and um, not super cropped, but just to like wear it over a, um, a camisole with jeans and do um, like I did with my, my, my purple one, just a couple of rows and then some ribbing. So yeah, I think I might wear it more actually just as a top. I could do with a few more tops in my wardrobe. I've got a lot of sweaters, but not a lot of just tops. The thing that I'm thinking about, um, oh, you can see that I'm wearing it over um, this dress. So you've got um, like a uniform color underneath the um, the patterning and the, the yoke design. But when I tried it on just over a white camisole and the camisole sort of sits here, you've got white here and then my skin here. I just didn't look as good. Like I think it's better to have one uniform um, 
underneath, if that makes sense. So if I was to wear it, um, like obviously I could just wear it as a top over this dress, um, but I could also wear it um, over maybe with jeans over like an, I would choose a nude camisole so that even if let's say the camisole stopped here, you wouldn't have this two tone effect where this is white and then this is skin. So it just didn't look great. Um, maybe I'll, I might take a picture of that and put it up here so you can just sort of see, cause I think it's worth sort of, you know, planning ahead. I don't own a nude camisole, so that is definitely something that I, um, I feel like I've mentioned that before and somebody sent me a link or well, they didn't send me a link, but they, posted a comment about where they got theirs. I'll have to do a little searching on the comments. I read everyone's comments and then I comment back, but I don't always, um, I need like a place to make notes about things. So, you know, oh, a tutorial suggestion or buy this from here or, um, you know, so I remember some things and other things I forget. And that's classic me, so that's why I set alarms for everything. Anyway, that's my, I'm still on it. I feel like this is going to be a really long podcast. Um, this is whip number one, a new one, Ranunculus, for the Fruitful Hands Knit Along. And I'll put the hashtag that they're using. I think it's something like fall into, fall into Ranunculus, something like that in 2023. Oh, but I'll, I'll put it um, down below. Yeah, so I reckon this won't take long. And you know what's really interesting is look how little, like look how much, I've still got a bit left. I could have just made that like a fully cropped, like, like you'd have to wear it over something, but I could have sort of, you know, had a little bit of room. Nah, probably not actually, there's not that much left. I'm gonna have to get into the second ball. Even if I make long sleeves, I'll get into the, I mean, short sleeves, I'll still need the second ball. And I, I think I might actually not do too much. I'll show you the, um, the person whose design I was inspired by, her version with Tin Lina and a silk mohair. And it was really pretty in a similar color. And I really like how she had it with not very much here and then quite a deep ribbing. So I think I might even switch to the ribbing pretty soon. Oh, one thing I will mention, um, I cast on with a tubular cast on and um, on six mil needles as suggested, I watched my own videos to remind myself. <laughs> And then I completely forgot that it was twisted rib and I just knit all the ribbing plain. And then I was like, this doesn't look right. <laughs> so I had undid it all. And then I decided to just do a long tail cast on. Not because I couldn't be bothered doing the tubular ribbing. I just don't feel like I like the tubular cast on as much for this because it is so open and airy. It doesn't have that really lovely effect that it normally does. Um, anyway, for me, I don't love it as much. So I just did a long tail cast on, but I was watching um, uh, Bobby on Knitter's Niche and she mentioned that she actually did do the twisted loop cast on, which is the cast on for the wide ne neckline. I mean, this isn't that wide. And she was really happy with it. So I was thinking, hmm, maybe the next one I'll try the twisted loop cast on. And you now if I don't like it, it's the cast on, I could just rip it back and start again. So. Right, um, yeah, I think that's it for the my fourth ranunculus and I don't think it will take long and it will be it will be done. And even though this is linen, because I'm holding it with the silk mohair and on six mil needles, there's no hand tension issues at all with this. It's very easy knitting. The only thing like sometimes using large needles can be a bit tiring. Um, but other than that, yeah, really happy with it. So this is um, work in progress number one. So my next work in progress is Pink Velvet by Andrea Maori, and I finally cast that on, I think I only cast it on last night. I was quite, um, I think my hands were hurting a bit from other projects, so I just felt like I needed some wool and the ranunculus was blocking. So I cast on with, um, I did the long tail tubular cast on, and this is Volmai's Twin in the colorway Feldmouse, and I've got two skeins of that. And this is Andrea Maori's pattern and her long tail tubular cast on is different to the cast on that I use for the ranunculus sweater. So I guess there's a few different, there are quite a few different ways of doing a tubular cast on. And in hers, she, you need a couple of setup rows flat and then you join to knit in the round. So when, I, um, when I'm knitting flat for a little bit, I just, I did that on straight needles because the long tail tubular cast on is quite awkward and fiddly and it twists around itself. So it was just easier for me to do it on a straight needle. And then I switched over to the circulars. And the contrasting yarn is Ching Fibre, um, which is the recommended yarn, because it's got quite a real, um, it's very different for, like it's very fluffy. And so let me see if you can see there, that's how it's, 
There's some short rows at the back. Um, she suggested wrap and turn short rows, but I did just switch them to German short rows and just w went one stitch further. And um, yeah, so it's super fluffy. I think it's gonna be really nice. Um, yeah, like the design itself didn't grab me when I first saw it, but it's, um, it's, I've warmed to it. So, and I think it's gonna be really nice in these, in these two colors. So, yep, really happy with um, that. And I'm not like, I definitely have to pay attention when I'm doing um, color work. It's my first color work round is the most, like I have to really pay attention because I've got nothing to build off. But after that, each color work row sits on another one and you can see very quickly if you're off. Like I don't put stitch markers or anything around because I just sort of, I can tell all that's meant to be a pink on top of a brown and hang on, I'm on top of a pink and that's not right. So um, yeah, so well, you can see the design already starting. I do enjoy color work and there's only, um, there's only 36 rows of color work. So that's not a lot. Um, and I think I'm up to maybe row five now. So, and that's only since last night. So Really happy with that one um, and nice to just be working with wool. A lot, I don't know what's in this Qing fibre. Who knows? Hang on, let me see. Um, it definitely, I do have the tag. Um, what's in this? Baby Suri, 65%, um, 20% merino and 15% silk. So there is some wool in there and sometimes just a little bit of wool's enough. And of course, mostly, I'm mostly using um, mostly using wool anyway. So, right, so that's um, another new cast on. And my, oh, the only other different thing I was gonna say was, um, the recommended needles for the body is 3.5 mil, which I'm using, but for the ribbing, I did a three millimeter needle. I tend to like to go down, sorry, my son's doing his laundry, which is really good, he's 16, and he's he's got a shift this evening, so he's just um, washing his clothes before he gets to work. <laughs> Um, I used a three mil needle because I tend to like that on two sizes down rather than one size down. So that's the only difference that I've made so far. Other than that, knitting to pattern. Right, so that's pink velvet. Oh, sorry. Um, another new project is another pair of skimmer socks. So for this, I'm using um, mustache yarns in the colorway Kama Sutra. And that is some leftovers um, from a previous um, pair of socks, like a you know, full mid calf length pair of socks. And I have about 15 and I think 15.8 grams left of each. So even if that ends up being just a little bit short, I'll just pick, there's so many colors in here. I'll just pick something that kind of seems to be about the same weight and will blend in with the, and with the striping and everything. So I'll deal with that when I get there. And I did buy those two millimeter needles from Sunspun and they've arrived. So. Um, and I'll, I'll be able to use those instead of the double, I'm actually kind of gotten used to the double points, but I just don't like taking them anywhere because I'm bound to either break them because they're wood or lose one. It's just, it's inevitable. I lose stitch markers all over the place. So a double pointed needle, I'm almost sure to lose. So, so I've only just started the first one and, um, that will be nice, um, because that's so small that can fit in my pocket. That's really good for, um, walking and knitting. Right, so they're my three new works in progress. One other work in progress that isn't new, but feels new because um, whatever I showed last week came off the needles. So this is the Thea top. I've done um, a tutorial on the picking up the stitches for the neckline, which I've done. Um, so my gauge was off. It was like 18 stitches over um, four inches instead of 20. Even with 20, it was gonna be a bit bigger than I wanted. Although having said that, I could have just fixed that mostly by casting on less stitches under the arms. Anyway, I probably went overboard and tried to do too many alterations. So I went down a needle size to a 3.5 mil. I changed to wood needles, which is actually like this on a 3.5 and wood is hurting a bit. So I haven't been able to work on it quite as much as I might've liked. I have to take breaks um, and either not knit or knit on something else. And what else did I do? I meant to cast on six less stitches, but I had a brain fart and cast on eight less. So, and I probably could have got, got away with just casting on four less. Anyway, it's working okay. I ended up doing one less for each of the, um, maybe I'll try it on, doing one less for each of the, um, what do you call it, the straps, and then six less in the middle. And I did a, um, let me see. I picked up, like in, in my other 
video I talked about, I picked up one for one for the cast on stitches and the live stitches, and then three for four along the angles, and then two for three along the sides. And that definitely, you know, stabilized all of that. Um, I did four extra rows because of my row gauge difference, and I probably didn't need to because, see how, um, I mean, it's sitting funny because I've got overdress, but see how deep that is? Now, there, uh, there is gonna be a pickup um, what do you call it? A pickup and a, a band about the same width. So, and that will definitely cinch it in, but I reckon I could have got away with not adding those four rows at all. And people had talked about the armholes being quite deep, but I was, yeah, I was a bit worried about it being like way too high, but it definitely stretched out, which I should have realized, but um, it's fine. Mm, sorry, all that ching fibers <laughs> and the mohair everywhere. Um, I reckon when I pick up those stitches that will, I'll be able to cinch that in pretty well. I don't think I need to go back and, um, what I might do actually is I'll stop now, pick up around one, confirm, you know, pick up around one, block it, try it on again and confirm before I go any further that yes, that actually works or no, that's a problem. And then if it is, I'll undo the armhole and rip it back. I don't really want to because this is... You know it's not a lot of knitting and it's right now stocking it in the round but um yeah hard on my hands so i prefer not to unknit if i can get away with it um yep i think i was a bit worried about that i might have narrowed it so much that it'll be a problem with bra wearing a bra but actually i think it'll be fine because i'll have another sort of half an inch on the edges and that will sort of all pull in a little bit fingers crossed so we'll see this um, it's kind of good for you to see this because you might knit this and then go, oh no, that's a problem. I'm going to rip it out. But maybe if you see me knitting it like that and then you see next week, oh, that wasn't a problem. Like it fixed itself in the picking up. Um, that might be helpful for you as well. So, um, you know, it's good for me to show you that hopefully and you can see, look, that looks quite, oh, hello, that's pretty gapey. Um, but yeah, it might, it might actually be fine in the long run once I pick up around the arms so uh was there anything else i was going to say about that um oh yeah there's no shoulder short rows which is a bit unusual but um as long as it fits fine um we'll see somebody mentioned that the front sort of tends to sit a little higher than the back um i don't mind that too much uh I, you know i probably would have preferred to have a few short rows in the back so if i make it again maybe i'll look into adding that uh what else was there that's it yep okay that's it and my next work in progress I will take it off is the Sophie scarf um, so let me just put that down I'm knitting this out of skein merino cashmere DK and I have a full skein so I've got plenty of yarn and this is in the in a color, like I over dyed this for my um, carnaby skirt and then threw this skein in because I didn't like the color very much. So what I decided to do, this is my um, first version. Actually, maybe I'll, here we go. I'm just gonna, um, this is the one I showed last week, the one I finished last week. I watched a video of um, Petite Knit styling it, I guess. And when I saw her, oh, I can't even remember how she styled it now. I think she did something like, but she had it doubled like that. So it was a, definitely a large version because she wrapped it around. So she had it like that. Yeah, definitely. She had it like doubled and then, yeah, like that. But hers would have had 33 stitches and mine went to 35. So her tails were a little bit shorter. So you know what? That's actually, that's fine. But anyway, I decided to try one narrow because if this works, that will be handy for smaller skeins. Um, so what I did was... I knit to, because I watched, I looked at a few other people's projects where they knit to 20 stitches and then they went straight and then they went down. Whereas this one, the large version is 33, but I went to 35, which I didn't need to. Should have just trusted the pattern and did the first one exactly as written at 33. But anyway, like that's, that's fine. It's just got slightly longer tails. And um, this one, I knit to 20, went straight until I would have hit 33 had I done the increases if that makes sense like I worked out how many rows would I have done between 20 and 33 stitches 
if I was increasing, how many rows is that? And I knit those that many rows straight and that was at 17 and a half inches. Then I blocked it and that grew to 22 and a half inches. So if I knit everything exactly the same in reverse, that would get me to 45. Um, this one's 52 and I had a feeling like 48 would have been better. Sorry, I'm just throwing out lots of numbers. If you're trying to count, that would be really annoying. 52 inches, a bit long. I thought 48 inches would be good. This one, if I knit it exactly in reverse, it'll be 45. So I might just go a few more past and then start, um, then do everything in reverse. So that marker is where I would have, um, that would have been the halfway point. Oh, sorry, but what I might do is make maybe just a little bit longer that the halfway point, do a little bit longer, keep track of how many rows roughly, and then start the decreases. And so how this one, I can't really style it probably because there's not enough, but um, I guess if I did it the way she was doing it, um, it would be like that. And then you'd have the other bit and tie. So you just wouldn't have it double. It would be like single. And so that would utilize yes, less yarn. So we'll see, I'll finish this one, see how I like it, see if I wear it, it would be a nice, it looks like a nice accessory that will also keep your neck warm. And like you could wear it with like a um, like a collared shirt with a little, you know, um, I've never been into that. And I know some podcasters have done sort of things about how knitting has changed their style. Um, like as long as it looks nice, I'll be like, okay, I'll give it a go. Um, but is it my style? I'm not sure. I do wear button up shirts, just not that often. But um, yeah, I'm open to trying new things. So we'll see and maybe what I'll do is I'll have a little look more on Ravelry and just or on Instagram and see how people are wearing them maybe I should do that a bit more before I start knitting things hmm anyway that would be an idea uh, anyhow <laughs> I've already started this I'm not gonna not knit it but whether I'll knit more thinking about um, how it would fit into my wardrobe might be a good um, might be a better starting point anyway Right, so that's where am I up to? Whip number one, two, three, four, five. That's five whips so far. Two more to go. Um, camisole number five. Right, so I have actually made progress. It was a bit hard for me to just psych myself up for the next step of picking up the stitches. Um, so this is cam camisole number five by my favorite things using Volmines Lace in the colorway Schwefel. I think that's how you say it. It's this really lovely murky green. And I've already done the body and the neck. And now I just was picking up stitches for the sleeves. And I've just started, let me see if I can find it. I've just started the, um, sorry, just started the double knit along the side, like literally just started, that's how much I've done. <laughs> but I feel like the picking up the stitches was really, that was a big, <laughs> Anyway, it's really, this was hard because you're picking up the stitches in a really different way. Like it was pearl, pearl edge stitch was a knit. So going into it, it was one stitch in, which was a knit stitch, but then next adjacent to that was a pearl. So that actually presents quite um, differently. The yarn is dark, it's small, my eyes are not what they used to be. So I had, you know, the light down, my glasses on, you know, really take breaks, breathe. As I wanted to make sure I'm following the following the line and I'm really going to try and make sure this doesn't clang but you know trying to follow the follow the line up and not go in or you know that's what makes picking up look bad when you don't stick pick a line and stick to it right wherever you pick just stick to that so but sticking to it was much harder with when you've got an adjacent pearl instead of an adjacent knit Anyhow, I did it, proud of myself. I picked up with a 2.75 mil needle and then I've been using a double point to sort of help me with the, just make it a bit easier, doing the double knitting on the edges. I started off with a 2.75 mil needle and then I switched to a 2.5 because it just looked a little bit big. It was like six rows, I didn't bother ripping back because you know, it's like, it's under the arms anyway. And, um, but I just had this feeling, I was like, that's gonna, that might be a bit flary. 
and I definitely don't want like something rippling and flaring here. I just think that's not a good look. So yes, so I'm pleased with that. Um, I picked up with a 2.75, but because with the double knitting, you're going to be knitting with the needle and another one, I ended up just putting the first half, like just switching them onto a 2.5, like just transferring. So that's all the 2.5 there. And then when I get to do the other half, I'll switch it, like just, you know, I'll switch it to a 2.5 then. So um, that is very much, um, you know, that's for me, that's, I guess it technically is portable, but it's so much back and forth in, um, yeah, I probably won't, won't be taking that anywhere. That will be, um, you know, doing my knitting up. Uh, at home I'd say. So that's number six and number seven, my last one, if I can even figure out what even is it. Oh, Exploration Station. Um, so I've done one row. <laughs> um, it's actually like I've gotten into a rhythm with it now and I'm fine with the brioche as long as I just check before I start. But um, I still can't, I can't read in brioche. I can um, watch podcast and brioche uh, but I can't read and brioche so and I've been reading a lot lately so that's why this only got one row so what happened <laughs> that's all it looks the same it's um, Exploration Station by Stephen West in um, Tosh Marino Light Antler no that's not Antler that one's Antler um, that one's Neon Peach uh, this is Graphite and this is Swiss yarns in an apricot color. So it will get done, um, but I'll do it more when I'm just watching uh, podcasts rather than reading. Right, so that's it, seven. Oh, sorry, I'm, today I'm making lots of banging noises. I do apologize. Ah, it's either dogs or blo blowers or who knows what. Right, so um, I'm up to what has caught my eye. I thought I'd just pop this on because so, it sort of goes nicely with my dress. So the pattern that um, has caught my eye recently is the Weekender Crew by Andrea Mowry. Uh, I quite like that. I think one of the reasons I didn't knit it before was the boat neck. And um, I just, especially that one, it seemed a bit high, like it might be a bit uncomfortable around my neck. Although mind you, I'm wearing something right around my neck, but I think something straight and pulling with all the weight of it, pushing against my neck. I was a bit worried that that would be a bit uncomfortable. So um, anyway, I like this crew neck. I think it's still got the nice design with the center seam. I wouldn't do the pockets. Um, I just think that's that they, they wouldn't be functional for me anyway. I wouldn't use them for anything. So yeah, I'm, I, I did like the look of that. And that's just, you know, it's caught my eye, but I haven't gone any further than looking, for, you know, anything past, oh, that looks nice. I haven't even investigated the gauge or the yarn or anything, but it did look nice. The other thing um, I've seen a lot on Instagram is this lady, um, Pope Knits, so Pope Vergara, I think. Um, she's got lots of just, her knitting is like works of art and there's often like um, different textures and lace, like sheer bits and beads and just beautiful. So it kind of inspired me and I've even forgot with that ranunculus that I started, I kind of, even for my first one, I remember thinking, oh, this would be so good with beads. And, and I know people have definitely done beads on it, either on the little flower section. I'll just grab the, um, but where I think beads might be quite, oh, where's my yarn? <laughs> Sorry. But where beads might be quite nice is these um, slipped stitches here. Um, I think like a bead, and it's also a really easy place to, to pop a bead on a slip um, or like a cross in that flower section would be quite nice as well. So um, I wouldn't go crazy, right? Like I'd just do a little bit somewhere, but um, this is some La Bienna May um, that I got when I was in Sunspun and I bought two with the intention of making a ranunculus um, held double. And so I actually, I have done a bit of beading um, in the past beading. I don't know if beading is the right word. I mean, knitting with beads. I think beading is a different thing anyway. Um, so I just, I've got a box of beads, but I just grabbed a little, um, a little container because I was looking at it thinking, oh, what would look nice with this? So, um, nope, that's a bit green, but maybe, oh, maybe that's a bit green. Oh, that one looks really nice. I don't know if that would fit on there, but, um, yeah, just 
because they, you know, they come in all different sizes and stuff and I haven't tested. They look pretty small, but this is pretty fine, but I'd have two strands. Anyway, just something to think about and just reminded me, and I feel like, you know, my, my knitting is probably a bit less utilitarian now. Like I have a lot of sweaters and I have a lot of tops. I actually don't have a lot of summer tops, so I am knitting a bit more in that area. Um, and my knitting style has changed. So some of the things that I've knitted, I just don't wear anymore. Um, and I do need to do a clear out and do some donating. Um, but yeah, I just sort of think, I don't mind if my knitting slows down a little bit and I just, you know, put spend a bit of time putting some beads on it. It's such a quick knit anyway. So yeah, that's kind of, I've put this in what's caught my eye, but I guess that's kind of potentially upcoming plans. Just, you know, I'm, I've got so many already, I didn't really want to add another, but I did buy this yarn with that plan. So that's not, that's not like I've purchased new yarn for it. It's with that intention. I just think that looks really pretty. Anyway, so that's, um, if you have, if you haven't seen her before on Instagram, you probably have, but Pope Vergara, her stuff's really beautiful. Uh, okay. So I think that's it for what's caught my eye, purchases and plans. So um, you probably see some of my purchases here. Um, Sunspun had like a clearance sale and they had 30% off um, quite a few items. Actually, my two millimeter needles were 30% off, so that was really nice. I guess they don't sell a lot of those. Um, so I, I grabbed those and I also saw these thread and maple baskets. So these are like the lids. And this one has a um this one has magnets in it. And so I got some of the um, these little, you know, the tapestry needles and the stitch mark the uh, scissors and it's like comes in a little kit and they stick on here. The scissors don't sort of hold too well. Um, because of the um, like if I put it like that on the on the thing it they scissors fall down but I no matter what no matter how many scissors how many tape measures I'm always losing something like or it's just I go to get it and it's not here I need to do a big clear out because um, I try to have scissors near everywhere like things like that that near everywhere where I might knit like you know scissors stitch markers tape measure all that stuff here beside my bed down by the couch um, in my knit, knitting notions bags, of which I have two, um, I could probably do with more of those, but I like to have a little pouch that kind of, you know, that's all I need and it just goes with me. Um, but I do find that I tend to take them, like I don't just leave them where they are. So I thought that was really sweet. And maybe if I'm like, no, these special ones, they live here. They're actually just in a, in a drawer at the moment, but they, because I was using this for other stuff, but yeah, so that's, um, so because I, it was 30% off and I'm also a Sunspun mem, mum, mem, mem, member, member, so I got 10% off, which doesn't quite work out to 40%. As the maths teacher, I have to just say that the way you work that out, I can't help myself. 30% off means you pay 70%, 10% off that means you pay 90% of 70%, 90% of 70% is 63%, so that means you've got 37% off. So that's still not a bad deal. 37% off, I was pretty happy with that. And these I know are really functional. And yeah, I just, I like my, my main handbag is a thread and maple bag. One that has the, um, I'll, I'll grab it in a second, um, zippers on the side so you can open up. It's really lovely and it's held up really well. There was a time when I think I must have had some like food in my handbag, like a, a nut bar or something. And my dog smelt it and was like scratching away to get into my bag. <laughs> so I've got all these like dog scratches along the leather, but it seems to have held up okay. He did get it. Um, yes, and now I have to keep, you know, with dogs, once they've worked out that is a source of food, um, if he, there's any sniff of anything in there, he's going to have another go. So I have to keep it up high now. And I think that's funny as animals get older, like once, like we had a dog, she's past now, Lily, but um, it took her like until she was 10 before she realized she could get into the garbage bin and after that that was like she would always find her trying to like get in in the middle always in the middle of the night though she'd never do it in front of us so she she knew she wasn't supposed to anyway sorry this is going to be a long episode and I shouldn't really be talking about dogs and getting into bins <laughs> I need to stay on track um, okay so purchases and plans I purchased these and I purchased the two millimeter needles and I also bought the December bow um, somebody mentioned and I'm sorry I can't remember um, that it's a it's a petite knit pattern and it's free not free it's not free it's a paid pattern but all of the money is being donated to save the children between between December 2022 
and December 2023. So if you're of any, if you have any interest in knitting like a bow, either for a wreath or for a hair tie or something, um, that would be a good time to get it while it's um, the um, proceeds are being donated. So that's all that I've purchased this week. Um, before I get into my plans, I might just mention kind of how you might sort of think like you've got a lot of things on the needles, Natasha. I don't know how you keep track of it. And it does, there is a bit of mental load there, I have to admit. But I like to have different projects that serve different purposes. But for example, I've got a pair of skimmer socks on the needles. I have one pair of skimmer socks. I won't cast on another pair of socks. Um, so I do have some rules for myself. Um, I have one main shawl, which is Exploration Station, and I quite like the look of the Pure Joy shawl by Hohi Locatelli, Locatelli, but I won't cast that on until Exploration Station is finished. You can see I have lots of categories, so potentially there's there's still a lot of whips. So, sorry, my, my son is doing his homework and he can see me and he's laughing at me, gesticulating. Uh, so that's my socks and a shawl. I have the Thea top, which is out of a plant fiber. I can't have more than one of those on the needles because that's sort of too hard on my hands. Although technically the ranunculus might be like that because it's got linen in it, but the silk mohair is a bit different. So that's a large needle project. Yeah, there's lots of categories. I could get up to like 10 whips with categories. <laughs> um, then I have, I have a fully wool, um, light, small needles gum. <laughs> garment this is sounding ridiculous lightweight so i won't start another lightweight top like i want to make a few other lightweight tops like a mini mock neck tank well i won't start that well because there's already one like that on the needles um i'm i've got the sophie scarf which is a small portable knit i'm reluctant to start another ranunculus while i still have the sophie scarf even though they're very different projects i feel like they're both kind of vanilla. The Sophie scarf briefly wasn't because I needed to work out, like I had to block it. So then technically it's not available as my vanilla knitting. That's when I would maybe cast on a ranunculus to be like, well, I've lost my vanilla knitting because it's blocking. But once I get that pattern sort of worked out and the numbers I like and everything, then that will become more like a, I don't need to block along the way. I can sort of figure out, you know, yeah, so that will be sort of my vanilla knitting. Um, yes, and I, have I forgotten anything? Um, I guess I've got my colour work one with pink velvet, and that's a jumper, and it's colour work. So I, I have a few rules, but within that, I still can pretty much cast on up to 10 projects. Like I could have a blanket now, I could have a crochet project. I don't, but I could. Um, yeah, so I don't even know what, that just sounds silly, like I don't really even have any rules, but well, I sort of do. Uh, anyway, I just, that sounds ridiculous. Oh, I meant to show you something else too, actually. I'm going to chuck this in the friend from the vault section. When I was talking about beads, I just grabbed this because I thought, oh, I want to show you. Um, so this is the, I can't, I can't remember what it's called, but it's by Laura Nelkin Designs. I'll put the name of it down below and it was a kit and it's like this really little lace weight yarn. So everything was in the kit, even the little, um, I love kits was in the um the little attachment thing was in the kit and this is fantastic because i wear it like a um you can wear it as a like a, a necklace like that you can double it over and have it like a tighter necklace i wear it as a bracelet um okay if i can wrap it around and wear it as like a little bracelet and i've even worn it as like a little um belt around a black dress to just cinch it in. It's so fantastic. I love this. Um, it was a bit, a bit of knitting. Uh, I knit it so many years ago. I'll put down here when I knit it. But yeah, I really like her um, her projects. And like I said, I haven't done any beads. I can't remember the last time I knit with beads. I think it was a shawl for my mum. From I was away on my 10th anniversary. So how long ago was that? I'm, it was 2024. No, 2014. So yeah, like nine years ago. It's been a long time. But I did really enjoy be uh, knitting with beads, and um, yeah, I just thought I'd share that project because it's, it's it's a really lovely one. I shouldn't be trying to make this episode longer. Um, my plans. So upcoming, I'm going to try and zoom through these because if you're um, 
well, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll hit the main points. The things that I still want to make are the, oh, I'll spit it out in a minute. I'll put this back down, hang on. What did I want to make? Um, the Soho, sorry, I'll do it in order on my notes, otherwise I'll lose track. So the December bow, I will use the leftovers from this, because that will be really nice for like a wreath, if, even if nobody wants to wear it in their hair, that would go really well for winter. And Mia makes wreaths at Christmas, and or at least she did last year. Um, the Soho top, I just need to figure out by Kadri, definitely making this. So this is like really high on the knitting plans. I'm definitely making this. I just need to work out my numbers if this swatch is true to gauge, because this is a bit smaller than the pattern and a little bit about um, widening the straps and lowering the neckline just a smidge. So that's definitely going to be um, on the needles, but I might finish the Thea top before I start this. The Kuta top, um, I'm still debating on yarn to use. I might use the Tin Lina, but in this colour, um, but I'll figure out. I just need to do a bit of mathing for gauge because this came out at 27 instead of 24, if this is true. So yeah, not 100% sure on that. But with that pattern, I could, that's one of those ones where you can kind of, you can switch a little bit on the fly because you do the lace up here and then there's some cast on stitches under the sleeves. But when you cast on the stitches under the, uh, under the sleeves, yeah, under the arms. Um, when you cast on the stitches under the arms, you could just cast on less and that will make it smaller or cast on more. Um, and it would just then, if your gauge was a bit tighter, this panel would be a little bit smaller or a little bit wider. So anyway, um, I still do, I'm either going to use this or I might use the Antigone yarn from, um, from um, Durham Natura, Durham Natura um, that I got from Sunspun. The only concern I have about that yarn is the row gauge might be a bit long and the um, lacy bit might come down a bit low and you can see my bra through it, that's where I'm a little bit unsure about the Antigone. Um, whereas I think with the Tin Lina, the lace panel might be a bit higher. So that's, that's just in my mind as to whether I use this or not. Um, the other things that were in my, um, what's called my eye, but I think they're gonna make it into my plans, is the Stripe Pipe Sweater. It just looks, by Veronica Lindbergh, who's Kuduva Kika. It just looks really, really nice. I like stripes and I just really like the look of it. And I also really appreciate, like it's made, it's in DK, so it shouldn't take that long. And you can either use DK weight yarn on a 20 stitch gauge or fingering weight held double. Should be pretty good at getting you that gauge. And um, I think it would look nicer in solids rather than um, even semi-solids. Like I think that you want those stripes to really look delineated and blocks of color that's consistent. So um, I'm gonna have a bit of a stash dive and see what I have that might work. I really appreciate that she has put in her project, like in her pattern page, roughly the meterage rather than just three balls or two balls, right? I really, like I like that in a pattern if they do that, because it can, especially with a scrappy project, it can help you see if you've got enough yarn. So that one, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make, I've just gotta find yarn. And the other one is the Sailor Swift top. I've got quite a bit of cotton um, that could work at a 23 stitch gauge. So I just need to find two, um, and also that doesn't use very much yarn. So, and I would like to do it in stripes too. So I need to find two um, colors that might play well together. So I just, that's really sort of come up on my, mm, I really wanna make that, and it might leapfrog some of the other plans. The half and half wrap I've definitely put aside for now. I'll show, I'll put a picture of like the colors that I was planning to use together. I just don't, I'm not excited enough about those colors. They're not horrible, they're nice enough. But to really start this, I, it's a, such a big project, I want to be like super excited to start it. Not, yeah, you know, I'm sure it'll be fine. You know, so I'm, I've just put it aside for now. I might de-stash, I might find another yarn that works better and that sings together with it. But I'm just, yeah, for now I'm parking it. I don't de-stash in a hurry. Um, I like, you know, the, this Volmise yarn for like, this, right? This was in stash for 14 years, right? And it's, I'm so happy I have this yarn. So I don't mind, I've got, I live in a big house right now. Things might be different if, you know, we move and downsize, but right now I've got the room and um, it's insulation. So that is, um, yeah, half and half wrap is just being parked for now. 
I'll think about it. Yarns in a Ziploc bag, safe and sound. Uh, Alpine Bloom, that's what I was pulling this up for. Alpine Bloom by Caitlin Hunter. I do plan to make that um, with out the lace, just with like a um, twisted rib uh, edging instead of the lace edging. Uh, that's Tosh Merino Light in Nocturne and Peach Bellini. What else? Um, I will make the camisole number four out of this Knitting for Olives uh, silk. Silk, yes, raspberry pink silk. Um, I need to swatch for that in a two by, in whatever the pattern is, like an offset broken rib or something. I do need to swatch for that. Probably a big swatch. Um, Rowan felted tweed for the Carnaby skirt. Not in a rush for this one, obviously, because it's coming into summer. But again, that might be, oh, that's a whole new category, skirt. I haven't even mentioned that. Skirt, I don't have a skirt on the needles. Um, interesting thing about this one though is it's a pretty dense gauge. So I don't like to have too many dense gauge things that hurt my hands. So Thea Top hurts my hands a bit. This I'm prepared will probably hurt my hands a little bit, even though it's wool. Yeah, even the other ones that I've made with wool, I knit it on quite a tight gauge. So um, yeah, I'm just that, I don't want too many things like that. So, but it's on the, I'm pretty sure that's what I'm gonna make with that. The really nice thing about that pattern too is because it's knit side to side, um, your row gauge, your stitch gauge doesn't really, your stitch gauge is just gonna affect how long your skirt is. And if it turns out too short, you just do a band on the top. Like it's, in fact, I even quite like that band. So yeah, it's quite a good, and then you just knit around until, and then you can block it as you go and you knit around until it's long enough and then bind off, that's it. So, um, and the last one is the field sweater. Uh, I don't know where I put that yarn. Mm. It's still on my, um, where is it? Where is it? Here it is. Sorry, here it is. I will show it just in case you're new. Um, I need a swatch for the field sweater. And um, this is Highland, Highland Wool, uh, Issyer yarn, Highland Wool, Silk Mohair. I love these two together. I'll def these are definitely going to be something together. I'm pretty sure the field sweater. Um, I wasn't for a while, but I think I will. And where are we? Um, yeah, that's the grains and yeah, it's really nice. Just beautiful color. So very autumnal. Um, of course we're in spring, so, <laughs> um, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I don't really follow rules about, I've been knitting summer tops all winter, so, but it means they're ready for summer, which is great. So if I knit jumpers now, they'll be ready for next winter, although that will be a while away. Oh, except, this is really interesting, I didn't think about this. We might be going to the US at Christmas. So, and it will definitely be winter because we'll be going to San Jose, so that's pretty mild. Um, but um, we'll probably also go to Lake Tahoe to a ski resort. So that will, I'll definitely need lots of jumpers there. So, you know, I'm free to knit whatever I want for whatever season, which I am anyway, I don't need. I don't, you know, any rules that I have are just rules for myself around that. Okay, I found another swatch. One last thing I forgot was the swatch from that Habu Bamboo. Oh, so pretty. Um, I was gonna knit the Anchor Tea, uh, Anchor Summer shirt or something out of this. And I saw Katie from Fruitful Hands was wearing that in their latest podcast and it just looks so nice. Um, unfortunately, I'm getting 18 stitches instead of 20. So I either have to, if this is true, um, I either have to, well, I certainly don't think I'll get any smaller, right? If anything, it would get bigger. So, and the stitch gauge for that anchor tee is 20 stitches. So this is gonna be too big. So either I go down a needle size, this is actually quite open and airy. Can you see that? You can even see my windows through that, can't you? You can see my art, like, yeah, that's pretty airy. So I could either, I might go down a needle size. Um, anyway, I'm thinking about that one, but that was kind of the plan with that. So. The next section is um, the Hidden whip ba Whips Basket. So I, um, this is the skirt, the Carnaby skirt that I over dyed in the rich dye. So that was the original color, sort of a um, semi-solid pinky red. And one skein was vastly different than the other. And I, pretty, I don't know what I was doing. I must've been knitting it like super dark at night or something and just not paying any attention. One whole skein was way lighter than Darker? Lighter? Anyway, one of the three skeins was way lighter than the others, I think. So I over dyed it, but then ended up with this one. Like it, it evened out the two skeins 100%, no problems. 
like you can't tell where the light skein was at all but what you can see is where the um, because I used a pot that was too small the dye pooled in one area so that was the original pot how many liters is that that's a 7.6 liter so you can see that in there there's just not enough room for it to move around right like it fits but it's just you can't move it well enough and you also try and care to be careful not to felt it right the skirt because you've got boiling or simmering water right so I went to somebody mentioned Big W I'm really sorry that I forget to write down people's names so you know who you are thank you for mentioning Big W this is like our big box store and there was a um, $20 I think it's 19 liters and that is going to have a lot of room to move around no problem and I have the dye now I would sorry you didn't need my face that close. I would love to keep it this red, but I can't fix that with that red because like, it's just, that's not gonna work, right? I need darker. So I bought this eggplant dye. Um, I'm hoping that's dark enough to mask that, um, that dark splotch, which is pretty dark. So um, that may still stay slightly darker than the rest of the skirt, but hopefully not way, way darker, or at least not obvious enough so I'm giving that a shot um, we'll see it was worth it um, and then obviously even though like this is becoming a very expensive skirt this is the third bottle of dye I've used um, and I've now got a pot <laughs> but this is like this goes down the drain this doesn't so you know if I do any more dyeing um, might be handy so and obviously i can't use it for any i have a big stock pot but i'm not going to use that for dyeing yarn so or fabric or whatever so i'll keep that um for future future dyeing endeavors uh okay gosh i've been talking a lot thank you if you're still here um other craft i haven't done any other craft which you can see i've done a fair bit of knitting so um i don't know where i would have found time to do any other <laughs> any other craft um one of the i'll, I'll I'll get into why I have done so much knitting, even though I've been working a lot in my personal section. So, um, uh, yes, I think like if you're here for the knitting content and you're off now, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And don't feel under any pressure to hear about my personal rambles. If you want to stay, great. If not, that's totally great too. Um, right, but if you can do the whole like and subscribe thing, that's really like, it is, makes you feel good. So, and co like, I love the comments too. It's really nice to hear what you're working on and um, yeah, and just like anything that you sort of, you know, I've got so much advice from people on this channel. So if there's, if you see me doing something and you're like, oh, that's not a good idea. I, I'm very open to learning. Um, yeah, so um, personal stuff now. I've been doing a lot of uh, knitting because I've been doing well actually, you know what I'll forget stuff if I don't follow my little notes I was planning on doing some Adobe Premiere Pro um, learning to use that for editing but that was just unreasonable to expect myself to learn that and do all the other learning that I'm doing at the same right now for work so that is just that will not happen until the Christmas holidays InShot is working great for me it's I know Adobe Premiere Pro would be better. I can, you know, add music and do other, and I want to learn those things, but you just can't do everything all at the same time. And my brain is so full of all of this high level maths. Um, and it's not like Adobe Premiere Pro, it, like you, but it's still more information that I have to retain. And cognitive load, something is, it either just won't go in or you put that in, something else is gonna fall out. So anyway, Adobe Premiere Pro, it will just have to be in shot for now um, and you know it seems to be working okay and I'm, I'm like I've gotten used to using that and I'm pretty quick at editing now um, because it's a bit you know down and dirty editing you know I don't really it's not fancy it's content without the trimmings at the moment but I would like to add the trimmings later so one day but what I have been doing is um, I've got a new class starting next term teaching extension to maths it's I haven't taught this course in I haven't taught the new version of this course ever and I also haven't taught this course in over 20 years so and like my maths is strong but it, you know like I've got to remind myself of a lot of these sort of tricks and things and also or you know quicker ways of doing things and then also of course how to teach it 
and I've got to write an assignment for it. And so I've really been busy. So what I've been doing is I've been watching um, some professional development stuff and reading professional development stuff on it and knitting while I do it. And that's totally fine. And then I'll stop and do questions myself. But that's why I've been able to get a lot of knitting done and a, a fair bit of pretty easy knitting, but no, like, um, what do you call it? Uh, no brioche. <laughs> I can't do high level math and brioche at the same time. Um, yeah, it's just, that's not possible for me. Uh, so what's happened this week? Um, you know, we do our usual cards, um, picking up Zach from KFC. Um, I went for a really nice walk on Saturday with um, uh, my friend Amy in the National Park. I'll put some video in the end of, we saw some um, yellow-tailed um, black cockatoos and some other little birds. And yeah, it's just really pretty. I've been going for walks with Zach with the dog. Um, my mum came over on sat, uh, Sunday night for dinner. She's been away for a bit, so she came over for dinner. And then I've just been working, like, uh, and dealing with problems with my new car, which I won't get into. New cars are not meant to have problems. This MG does. So I'm very sorry that we bought it. We might be having to get rid of it because it's had lots of issues already. And even though it's under warranty, it's already been back to the service centre a couple of times and it probably needs to go back again. So I'm just feeling, I'm not feeling the love for it and we have to now think about you know we were planning on buying a big car for towing a caravan eventually I don't know whether we do just switch to that now I don't know it's a whole other thing but that's obviously taking up a bit of time too <sighs> right so that's been um, that's been my week knitting and work and a bit of family time and the other thing I've been doing is I've still been reading, so it's, it really has been a lot of knitting and reading. I'm still reading this Life Worth Living. I'm up to, where am I up to? Chapter two now. I'm sort of reading a chapter every other day and it's got questions at the end. So it's like a homework book, <laughs> but I do, I like it. It makes me, you know, like I make notes in the margins and um, I've got a, a Word document because it's going to be a book club thing. So we're going to talk about it at school next term. Um, I've got a Word document with my answers for things. So, you know, because it's, you know, you're thinking about your life and what am I responsible for? What are my things that I must do or that my conscience tells me I need to do? What am I, you know, anyway, it's good. I like it. So I've been reading that, um, but like a little bit at a time. And yeah, I might go to the beach tomorrow with Zach, though. I feel like it's been a lot of work and reading and um and the most walking that i've been doing is like maybe two kilometers with a day with zach and gus so i could oh and i did go for that bushwalk with amy on saturday but i need to be outside more like i like being out in nature and i like going for walks so um and it is meant to be 31 degrees celsius tomorrow the beach water the water in the ocean will be too cold to swim in but anyway i'll see maybe just go to the pool like just something, get out. I'd like to do that. So, um, and yeah, maybe this weekend too. Anyway, I think that's enough for, I think I've sort of said all the things that I wanted to mention. Um, and this is probably getting pretty long. Thank you so much for watching. If you're still here, I really appreciate all of you, your comments, your, um, your encouragement, your advice. So yeah, thanks for being here. I'm, I love doing this. Even when I'm busy, I feel like this is, um, yeah, it's something that I just enjoy. I enjoy sharing and I enjoy hearing what other people are up to. So it can get a bit overwhelming with all my whips and things, but none of these uh, have to be done by any set time. So they can just they can just sit. That's fine. So I don't feel any obligation to finish anything for you guys. And, um, you know, and I really appreciate the suggestions for tutorials. And like, I think somebody wanted ones on grains for the field sweater, and which I'd like to do, but I'm not kind of in that. I'm not making that at the moment. So... Um, I'll do the tutorials that sort of fit in, um, but if they're really quite a simple one and an easy thing to do, I'll definitely, like I, I hear your requests for them and if I've, if there's something I've, maybe, oh, you know what I might do in the comments, I might put, or in the description box, I might put down below a little list of upcoming tutorials and then if, if you see one that you've wanted is not on the list, maybe put in a mention, because that's what I was saying, you know how I was saying like I've, someone mentioned something and I forget about it. But if I keep it at the bottom of the description box and then I just that, you know, I sort of copy it over to the next week and then it just grows and then I take something off if I've done it, then you can sort of look down there and see what's coming up and, and make a request and then it can go in the, in the request list. And then maybe at the Christmas holidays when I've got a bit more time, I can do a few more of them. 
Anyway, oh my goodness. I may not have been doing a lot of walking exercise, but my mouth has had a workout today. So <laughs> sorry about all the talking. Thanks for being here and I'll see you next week. Yeah. What are they eating? Are they banks here? Yes. <laughs>